Hello and welcome to my channel, Cali Legends Media. I'd like to thank all of you who have subscribed to this point. Really appreciate you all. Sorry I haven't put out a video in a while. I've been having uh, a lot of people in and out of my house for uh, something that took place, something personal with the family, and haven't really had a chance to, to do much recording. Then we had uh, furniture coming in, we're moving things around in the house, and uh, I just want to apologize. It's been it's been some time since I put out a video. So I'm going to be releasing a couple of them today and probably a couple of them tomorrow to make up for that. And I hope you enjoy them. Today's video is going to be about one time when I got arrested. I got arrested in Beverly Hills. Me and about five of, five of my friends took off just cruising around, right? We, we were cruising around in Hollywood. Uh... I didn't even know we were in Beverly Hills, but we had to use we had to use a restroom, and it was late. It was late at night, and uh, we pulled into this parking lot. We weren't paying attention. We we're all talking, laughing, we're having a good time. You know, we're drinking and stuff. And uh, what happens is we're not even there, but a few minutes, and a bunch of cop cars swooped in on us. I mean, they had us covered all the way up through all sides, man. They just came in on us deep. They were asking us what we were doing there. We tried to explain to them, you know, why we were there and stuff. Nevertheless, they handcuffed us and they put us in the in the, in the cop cars. Okay, because it took a couple of cars. They only put two of us, two in one car, three in another car. Okay, after searching our car and locking it. They took off with us when we were like, hey, what are we being arrested for? Well, the charge was suspicion of, of uh, breaking and entering the bank, right? They were thinking we were, we were there to try to get into the bank somehow. We didn't have no tools with us, nothing. They, they're just, you know, it's Beverly Hills. They needed, they needed somebody and something to do, I guess. You know, I don't know. Any case, we're on our way to the substation and they get a call, okay? So, I don't know, people, well, I'm sure a lot of people haven't been in, in, in cop cars when they get a call. But if they get a call that they could answer with you in the car, they take off with you in the car with sirens blaring and everything. And uh, sometimes you get let go because their catch is bigger than you, you know. But this wasn't the case. What they did is they went to this nightclub called the Roxy. I'm not sure if the Roxy's in Hollywood, L.A., or Beverly Hills, or Wilshire District. It's somewhere up there. It's called the Roxy. Very popular nightclub. Anyways, the patrons of this nightclub are, are throwing bottles at the cops. You know, some of them are fighting with each other. And in the middle of all this, the, the cop car that had the other three homies in it pulled up alongside us in the opposite direction the cars came like this side by side to each other and and they opened the doors you know in the back doors so that they can get out and climb in the back seat with us during this time bottles are flying cups of of drinks are flying hitting the cop cars and they're transferring my homies from that cop car to the cop car i'm in and obviously there's no room for two people back there you know, when you get in, a, in the back of a cop car, it's very, very small space. And the seats are usually hard plastic. They had them climb on top of us. They didn't care. They piled us up like, like sacks of potatoes on top of each other. And that's where we rode to, to the Beverly Hills station. All along, I'm thinking, man, you know what? This, this whole trip's going to be all bad. But... When we got to the station, it actually turned out to be pretty nice, you know. Uh, this turned out to be quite an eye-opening experience for me. Now, I've, I've been to different substations, but never one like Beverly Hills. After we got processed and we did the paperwork, they took me to my cell, okay. When I was standing in front of my cell, I was handed a blanket two sheets a pillowcase and a pillow that was my that was my bedroll all nicely folded and everything right cell door goes open i walk in and the first thing i noticed was was the mattress big old thick 
chunky mattress, right? And I turned around and there was a camera directly in front of the cell, pointing into the cell, right? And already I'm thinking, wait, man, this is like, this is way different than anything I've ever seen. I've seen different substations, but never nothing like this. Well, the trustee hands me this pamphlet. So I'm thinking it's a pamphlet for, for scabies or uh, bed bugs or some type of contamination or something, you know, like they were at a, going on in the county jail. But it wasn't. What it was, was a menu. And the uh, trustee told me, fill this out. Here's a pencil. Give me a little pencil. He says, fill this out. I'm going to come back for it. But I need you to make sure you fill this out. So he closes the door. He goes, if you need anything, just push that button on the wall right there. And you could talk to the deputies or, or, or they'll send me back here. You know, but you could call us from that button right there. Whole different, whole different type of experience going on here, right? So I make up my bed, you know, I get my pillow, fluff my pillow up. And I'm like, all right, you know, sit down and I open up my menu. You're not going to believe this menu. This menu asked me if I wanted coffee, tea, juice, or milk. So I picked coffee. It asked, did I want decaf or regular? Did I want creamer or powder? Did I want sugar or sweet and low? Like, it gave me all these choices just for my coffee. Then it asked me about the eggs. Did I want scrambled eggs over easy eggs, uh, poached eggs? Like some ridiculous stuff. It, it was like a restaurant menu, you know? So I, I made it out for my breakfast, you know. I didn't want toast. I, I got a, a, a muffin instead with my coffee and my eggs and uh, I forgot what I, whatever, bacon. Some bacon. Ask if you wanted bacon or sausage. Sausage link. Yeah, and lunch lunch was the same thing. It was a, a burrito, you know, with uh, with nacho chips, salsa, and, and uh, Kool-Aid, you know? And then dinner <laughs> was just as ridiculous. You know, they, they really, it was like a menu to a restaurant. And I gave this over to the trustee when he came. And I, I laid in, I laid down to go to sleep, and I'm thinking, ah, it sounds good on paper, but it's probably, you know, the same old stuff. It's going to be some nasty-ass food, you know? But to my surprise, when the morning came, there it was on hit. Perfect little breakfast there. Lunchtime came, cool. I didn't get to see dinner. I, I'm sure I would have been amazed at that, but uh, I, I got released. I, I slept like a rock on my nice, comfortable bed. And uh, and I left that place, you know. Uh, we didn't get charged for anything. We got kicked out. And they changed it for, for uh, that they brought us in because we were drunk. And they just let us sleep it off. But we weren't drunk like that. You know, it was, it was, they probably were trying to look for something. They didn't find it, so... You know, to cover themselves, they, they came out with that. So we're going to look at the other side of the coin now. That was the best experience in, in, in being in a jail cell. My worst experience was in Alley County Jail, the downtown jail. I was in a cell one time. And on the tier, right outside the cell, it sounded and it looked like it was raining. It was leaking so bad into that tier that you could hear the rain. It was raining hard outside, but it was raining maybe, I don't know what the difference was, but it was raining hard inside too. We could hear the water hitting the floor. It was loud. And good thing they have drains going down the tier or we would have been flooded. Um, and it rained for for quite a while. But besides besides the, the leak of that roof they had roaches big huge roaches you know those ones that look like they got a vest on you know them 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 bold suckers that come up to you and look at you you know with their antennas like checking you out and 
They got no fear, you know? Climb everywhere, man. In the middle of the night, you wake up, you got to knock them off your blanket and stuff, you know? It was bad in that place. They had mice, not rats. I didn't see no, not, no rats at all. The little mice, the little gray mice. A lot of those. You, you couldn't leave your store on the floor. You had to tie it up, hang it up, and leave it hanging where they couldn't get to it. Because they'd get into your soups and, and, and open up your candies and stuff. Yeah, you... It was a it was a battle, you know, an animal against man in there. <laughs> Anyways, I was bored when one night, one rainy night, okay, because it was raining that night too. And uh, I hung over the side of my bunk, and I had a, a baby Ruth bar. And I took a chunk of that baby Ruth bar, and I, and I set it there on the floor, and I hung over the bunk to where my arm was up against the up against the the bed and I just had to come down real quick right I had a shoe in my hand and the bottom part of the shoe where you put your foot in I had it like a cup and my and my thinking was when he gets close enough to the candy and I'm able to get him I'm gonna catch him with it like you know put the shoe over him right well my plan half worked you know uh he finally came around you know, I had a lot of time on my hand to be fooling around with this, right? But he finally came around and uh, very carefully approached the approached the the candy. I think I scared him off one time. I probably moved without realizing, you know, that I wasn't staying as still as I thought I was. But in any case, he finally came to the candy, and I came down on him, right? And I caught that little that little rascal. And it was, it, it, I kept him for a couple of days, you know, fooling around with him. Tied a string to him. And and, and uh, I put a little cape on him, you know. And uh, I forgot what I wrote on his cape, but, you know, just clowning, you know, just fooling around with the little mouse. And I shoot him out in the tier. And I was on the last cell way at the end of the back of the, of the, of the tier. But I let him go and he'd run towards the front, right? He had nowhere else to go. So I used them for my line for a while. You know, people would trip out. Sometimes people would be a little bit, a, a little bit gotcha, and they'd get them. You know, and, and they thought it was funny. They'd get them and they'd be twirling them, and they'd shoot them down to the cell I was trying to get to. And I'd be, hey man, leave my mouse alone. You know, everybody calls the mice Freeway Freddy. It, it don't matter what mouse it is. He's Freeway Freddy. If you if you're in jail, <laughs> yeah. So they miss with my little. Camarada Freeway Freddy, man, until one day they threw him too hard, pobrecito, and I guess, you know, he, he couldn't take it no more. Anyways, that was the worst place, you know. I don't have to get into the food because the food's always nasty in the county jail. The, the eggs turn green by the time they get to you because they're not real eggs. They're made out of powder. Anybody who's been there knows uh, the food's nasty. They come in this big metal carts. By the time they get to you, uh, it, it's it's really bad. Barely edible. There's no way for you to heat your food in there unless unless you're lucky and you have matches or a lighter and you know how to make a stove and you're creative of, and you're creative enough to be able to make a stove and warm up whatever you want to warm up. Even to warm up water. You know, you can't, the water that comes out of the, out of the sink is not warm enough for you to enjoy a hot cup of coffee. So you need to have some type of ingenuity. As a matter of fact, I'm going to do a video on, on how we used to make the stoves out of toilet paper. And, uh, and they burn for a long time and they burn bright, they burn hot. And we'd use the, the empty bugler bags back when we had tobacco. If not, we use a, a Doritos bag. You know, and you just be careful not to melt it, you know, but you could get the water hot enough where it, it's already throwing steam out, you know, which is a lot better than drinking uh, faucet water that's less than lukewarm. Anyways, that's my story of my my, my best and worst experience uh, sitting in a jail cell uh, from Beverly Hills to Skid Row type deal, you know, big difference, night and day. Anyway, it's a short little video. Just uh, wanted to share some time with you guys and, and talk a little bit about uh, how bad it can be uh, and how good it gets when you, when you, when you get lucky. You know, because you, you do get lucky sometimes. And uh, 
able to eat good and do do some things a little bit over the the norm anyways um of course with all my videos the advice is share us your freedom take care of it don't end up in these places they're nothing nice not enjoyable in any way shape or form and nothing like what we got out here anybody in there is lying if they don't tell you they were wish wishing they were out here able to do what we're able to do so let's hang on to that privilege thank you for watching my video i hope to see you in the next one if you haven't subscribed hit that subscribe button there's no cost uh incurred it's absolutely free so if you can please hit that subscribe button that like button notification bell and you'll be notified whenever another video comes out thank you for watching if you watch this far with me and you have a good day thank you god bless you